For this tutorial, I have this example sound effect, which is a door closing. So I'll just quickly play that. And what we're going to do is we're going to quickly add some reverb effects to give it more of a cinematic continuous tone after the original sound effect ends. So I have my sound effect here. It is a very short sound effect as is less than one second. So the first thing you want to do is actually add the silence to create the reverb effect. So what I like to do is add a few seconds of silence. So for this one, considering how short the original sound effect is, I'm only going to add, say, about five extra seconds. So I'm just going to drag over the remaining area here, go to generate, then silence, and it'll automatically know exactly how much you've selected here. So just press OK. My big tip here is that it adds a little partition here, but you just want to click it to get rid of it because otherwise sound effects will kind of break into it. And I personally don't really like the partitions that Audacity has, but that's how it is. To add the reverb, you can do it two different ways. The first way is just to select the whole sound effect and then add the reverb. This can definitely work and it will take more of the original sound and keep it going afterwards, but it does mean that the whole sound effect will be echoey. So you might not want that. You might just want the end of the sound effect to linger. What I'm going to do is show you the method where you want the end of the sound effect to keep lingering. So to do this, you want to just kind of find where the actual sound ends. So there's actually a bit of fall off on the sound effect as is and that's great because what you want is you do want the sound to start fading out. If you have a sound effect that just pretty much cuts off straight away you want to add a lot of fade off but considering this already has it we don't actually really have to edit it too much but just for the sake of showing you what you typically want to do is just get the last little bit of this sound effect. For this particular one, actually I'm just going to zoom in. For this particular one there's a little gap here so you probably don't really want that. You just want the kind of last bit of it. What you would typically want to do is you just want to add a fade out and it just fades it out a little bit more. Then what you want to do is I'm going to zoom back out again is you want to select all of the extra silence up to the point where you started adding the fade out. So that was approximately here and then go to effect and then reverb. Reverb is a built-in sound effect for Audacity, so you don't have to worry about any plugins. This one is completely included in the base software. So you do get a bunch of effects here. And I should mention straight away that this is a preset that I've loaded up. These are the settings that I actually use when I make most of my reverb effects. So if you want to, you could pause the video right now and recreate these settings in your own version of Audacity and then play around with which effects work best with you. But what I'm gonna do is just quickly go through these effects so you know what you want to actually edit. The room size effect, if you ever use the matrix reverb effects, you'll know that the room size is all about the reverberance and it's an effect that can make it sound like a sound is coming from within a room of different sizes. For this one, because it's a reverb effect, you do want quite a high room size so that it carries the echo along. So I have mine at 75%. The pre-delay, this is the delay in milliseconds of when the actual main tones that you are extracting carry along. So I've only got 10, so it's a relatively short pre-delay. If I put it up to a higher value, it just means that there's a massive delay, so it just starts kicking in around here, and it doesn't sound very good. So you do want a fairly low pre-delay, so it just kind of kicks in and just runs the sound effect along. We have the reverberance, so yes, this is a reverb effect, so we do want it pretty high. So I've just got mine at 82. So we have damping, wet gain, dry gain. If you've used editing tools for sound quite a lot, you will be very familiar with these terms. So I would just recommend having a look at these yourself. I won't really go through them because they do have some effect, but it's not massive. You've got tone low, tone high. So this is just how much of the high tones and low tones you want to carry along with this. I don't really want to have much of a discrepancy between the high tones and low tones. So I've just put both of them up to 100. For stereo width, I don't actually typically edit this much because I don't really see much of an effect when I make it higher or lower. So I would only really check this out if you really want to fine tune your effects or otherwise just have it at 100%. And as always, when you are editing these dials, you can do a preview there and then so you can check what you're doing is actually going to work. So that's always handy. And then with the manage section, you can save your own presets here if you want to keep using it. I have my main reverb preset saved just for future use. And 
there we go. So I'm going to press OK. And you can tell that it's worked well because you can see this really nice fade off here. And what I will say is sometimes when you make a reverb effect, there'll be a little gap when you first make it. And so there'll be like a little pause and then it will do the reverb, but it'll be this kind of clicking sound effect. And the reason why it's happened is just because the fall off hasn't quite worked because like I mentioned, you need the sound to start falling off a little bit when you make this effect because it is meant to be a continuous kind of fade off effect. And so my advice for that would be is just select it again. So if I just take off this effect, Let's say, for example, this effect isn't quite working. I'm not really getting the reverb I want. I would just recommend going back to effect. And then what I usually do is, so if I add the first fade out and I'm still having issues, I will put another fade out. Usually I only have to add two fade outs in total if the sound isn't properly working with the reverb. In my experience, I haven't had to add more than two fade outs, but I would just recommend keep adding them until you get the reverb effect that works best for you. So there we go, a super quick way to add some great cinematic reverb effects. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If so, please leave me a like and subscribe. And as always, please leave me any comments you like, any video requests that you want, I'm happy to look into them. And I'll see you all in the next video.